so now that we've kind of learned about costs, we're going to do a little bit of practice with them. Um, these are some different types of questions that, that hopefully will help you kind of grasp the differences between the different kinds of costs. So um, we're going to use VC, FCTC, or MC to complete these sentences. Blank does not depend on the quantity of output produced. It exists even at zero output. So MC does depend, um, VC does depend, TC depends on VC, so we can rule out TC. FC is the only one that doesn't really depend on the quantity of output produced, and it exists at zero output. Fixed costs always exist. The slope of the total cost curve, right, this is actually from a different, um, a different one here, but the slope of the total cost curve is the marginal cost curve. That's because all of these, um, these marginal curves are actually the slope or the derivative of the total cost curves, or of the total curve. So remember that um, the, the slope of the marginal product curve is the total product curve. It's the same idea with this one. Um, fix, fixed cost plus variable cost, well, it's just total cost, so that one hopefully isn't too bad. Blank depends on the quantity of output produced and deals with changing inputs. Okay, so this one actually could be um, could be marginal cost, but it's probably more accurate to say it's variable cost since it deals with changing inputs. Changing inputs are the variable inputs. The added cost of doing something one more time. Oh, that is perfect. The added cost, that's the marginal, ad added or additional cost of doing something one more time. Marginal cost. Change in total cost generated by producing an additional unit of output. One more unit, right? That's, a, again, that's our kicker here, additional. So we should key in on marginal cost. So the ad additional cost, the change in something generated by an additional. Change in total cost divided by change in quantity. So change in cost divided by change in quantity is actually going to be an average, right? It's going to be an average. So we don't have this up here, um, but we know that the change in something divided by the change in something um, or sorry, this isn't the chain. This isn't the average. Um, I, I had brain fart there. The change in total cost divided by the change in the quantity of output is the same thing as the one we just said here. So it's it's the marginal cost. It's the um, the one right before it. Phew! I haven't had my morning coffee. Uh, the blank of producing a given quantity of output is the sum of the fixed cost and the variable cost of producing the quantity of output. Um, well, that that is just literally saying the same as this one here. Fixed cost plus variable cost is total cost. Hopefully that does work out. Why is the total cost curve slope upward? Oh, that's just kind of that's just out there. Why does it slope upward? Um, because, right? So let's think. Um, why would that go upward? Well, why would it always be going up? Well, the fixed cost. So let's think about fixed cost is always going to stay the same. Variable cost is always going to be rising. Variable costs increase. Um, and that's actually why this is going to be increasing that whole time. When a firm is producing zero output, total cost equals, oh, this one's kind of neat, so we know total cost is just variable plus fixed, but when a firm has zero output, then they don't have any variable costs, so they're just left with their fixed costs. Which of the following statements is true? Marginal cost is the change in total cost generated by an additional unit of output. Okay, marginal cost is the change in variable cost generated by an additional outfit. Ooh, I like this, this is a good one. Marginal cost must cross the minimum of the ATC. So we absolutely know this one is always true, right? The, the marginal cost always goes through like that. And you've got an ATC and an MC, that one's always true. And we also know that marginal cost is just defined as the change in TC from an additional unit of output. So we know that one's true. But let's think for a second about this second one. Change in variable cost generated by an additional unit of output. Well, what's driving the change in total cost? If we know that the first statement is true, that the change in total cost generated by an additional unit of output is marginal, what's, what's behind that change? Why does that change? It only changes because of the variable costs changing, right? That's the only thing that changes here. The fixed costs always stay the same. So in fact, marginal cost could also be defined as the change in variable cost generated by an additional unit of output. We don't normally define it that way, um, but I like that question because it makes us think a little bit. So the correct answer is E. Now, number 12, marginal cost, marginal cost, fixed cost, average total cost. So for these, let's just take a look. Marginal cost of the second unit. So the second unit, right, the change from to the second unit, um, we know that it, we could actually say it's the change in variable cost, or we could say it's the change in total cost. It doesn't really matter. 
um, but it is 30 over one. So $30, what's the marginal cost of the fourth unit? Fourth unit, all right, so that's 50 there. Look at that, it happens to be 50 there. It's the same value, so that does hold true. What's the fixed cost? Ooh, nice, nice. So at quantity zero, variable cost is zero, total cost is 40, so that means fixed cost has to be equal to that value, 40. And the average total cost for the fifth unit, so what's the total cost at five? 240 divided by the quantity five. Ooh, that one's gonna be tough, isn't it? Um, that was $48, right, $48. Um, so hopefully this, this helps you think about some of the ideas and the relationships among costs. I'll see you next time.